What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel for another Monday market update. I hope you have enjoyed your three day weekend. If you get a three day weekend, it is Memorial Day weekend. And of course we remember all who have made the ultimate sacrifice for the freedoms we have in this country. So join me today on a market update. I am here every Monday and obviously on a three day weekend, still here giving you your update on what's going on in the Phoenix real estate market. If you're new here, you can catch these updates every Monday. I also post other videos about Phoenix real estate throughout the week. So make sure you subscribe, hit the bell for notifications and uh, don't miss it. So um, I, by the way, am Caitlin McKegg. I am a real estate broker here in Phoenix, Arizona. And today I want to talk a little bit like I have in the past about what's going on in the economy or in the real estate market overall, and then we'll drill down to Phoenix. And as we get into Phoenix, I just wanna say thank you to the Cromford Report. That is the source of a lot of my information about the Phoenix real estate market, in addition to my experiences as a real estate broker as well. So let's start talking about mortgage rates. Okay, so uh, rates have gone up. That is no surprise, but we did have some changes happening last week. So. When we look at mortgage rates, we actually started in January around 3.409, and in from January until May, we jumped all the way to 5.539, which has been a huge increase. Uh, I think, in fact, the largest increase in such a short amount of time that we've ever seen in mortgage rates. And uh, what happened this past week is uh, the Fed actually um, announced that they're gonna do two more uh, interest rate hikes um, of 50 basis points. And so that is not a huge surprise. They've been talking about raising rates uh, as the summer goes on and as the year goes on to beat inflation. And keep in mind, that's not mortgage interest rates that they're talking about specifically. They're just speaking about interest rates overall. But uh, what also has happened as it relates to mortgage interest rates is uh, they actually went down about 31 basis points to 5.286. Um, and that was last Thursday. So as of May 6th, we were at 5.5. Um, as of Thursday, we were kind of down to 5.2. So that's actually some good news for buyers out there because we've been expecting rates to just continue to climb and climb and climb. Likely they will continue to go up. I would say we will probably get closer to 6% if not over, but at least there's been a bit of relief, right? That's kind of some good news. So we'll have to keep an eye on mortgage interest rates and what happens with that. Keep in mind too, that these announcements of the 50 basis point hikes, a lot of mortgage brokers have already kind of priced that into their rates. So it's not necessarily going to be reflected immediately in mortgage interest rates when these hikes take place because it's kind of what we've already been seeing. I also wanted to share this uh, graph that I have here at the bottom of the um, 30 year fixed rate mortgage average in the US because look where we're at over here. I mean, it feels like we've made a huge jump and we certainly have compared to what we were used to over the last couple of years. But when you look at uh, where we used to be in 1980 and the majority of the last 30 years, we've been so much higher in terms of mortgage interest rates than we have been in the last like 10 years. So this spike here that we're seeing really is not the end of the world. And I know it just comes down to perspective, right? Um, folks that bought homes in the 80s, this doesn't feel crazy, but anyone who was just entering the home buying market over the last five or 10 years, this feels like we've just lost all of our affordability, right? So you gotta uh, keep in mind the perspective. And so I just like this visual because it really shows, you know, over time where we've been with mortgage interest rates and where we're at today really isn't all that terrible when we look back in time. Okay, so last week I talked about some data from Redfin and this week I have some more data from Redfin that I wanted to share. So um, they are saying that, and this is on a national scale, over the last four weeks, 19% of sellers decreased their listing price. And that's the last four weeks in May. And that is the largest share of price cuts that we have seen since October of 2019. 
So if you remember, the pandemic is really what set us off into this wild, crazy market. And October of 2019 was a seller's market in most places, but certainly much more calm than it is today. So now that we're seeing these list price reductions coming back to 2019 levels on a national scale, um, there's a lot of question around our prices going to go down, which leads me to my next point because this is a graph that Redfin has shared here. Home price appreciation expected to trend down, but prices are not going down. That's what they're saying. We're going to have slower appreciation rates. We're not going to uh, lose value in homes or have negative appreciation rates. So this is what uh, Redfin is predicting. Um, you know, it's hard to, to know what will actually happen because they're looking on a national scale. Uh, I feel much more comfortable, uh, you know, making not real predictions, but maybe some assumptions about uh, what would happen in Phoenix. But on a national scale, that's really hard to say. But here's what they're saying. So right now, um, you know, 15.9%. Uh, and then, oh, well, that's Q1, but Q2, 12.9, Q3, 10.8. And then as we get into next year, um, the end of 2023, they're anticipating 3.2%. Uh, annual appreciation in home prices. So I like to see this because this is is normal, right? Like 3.2% annual appreciation is okay. That's a normal market. Um, this has been out of this world. So this, a 3.2% annual appreciation is a normal market. It is a healthy market. It's a stable market. It is not a bubble bursting or a crash. So just wanted to share that. That's what Redfin is uh, reporting in uh, the wake of seeing all of these price listing price cuts taking place across the country. So let's talk more about uh, Phoenix and we're gonna talk about some data from the Cromford Report. So they have this awesome uh, graph here and uh, it is talking about the under contract prices of homes that are currently under contract um, are active listing prices, and this is all average list price per square foot or average price per square foot. So we've got our active listings currently, our under contract listings currently, and then we have listings that have closed in the last month and what the list price was of those closed sales over the last month. So when I first read through this, I got a little bit confused. So I'm gonna do my best to explain this and hopefully I am not confusing you. But the blue line, we have active list price per square foot. So these are the active homes on the market right now um, and what their average list price per square foot is. And right now we're just a little bit, we're right under 360, I believe, or right at 360. And you can see this is starting to trend down a little bit. Um, not too much, but it's certainly not climbing as it had been before. Uh, so that's gonna be something to watch because this is where homes are currently listed at. And as I've mentioned in past videos, list price reductions has totally increased. We're seeing a lot more sellers uh, decreasing their list prices. And so that will eventually be reflected in this. Now, we also have the green line, which is the under contract list price per square foot. So these homes are currently under contract uh, as of the same date that we looked at these active list prices. And you can see that uh, the listings under contract uh, number is a little bit, um, the average dollar per square foot is a little bit lower than where we're at with these active list prices. Now we have the brown and red lines here. The brown line is again, looking over the last month, the average price per square foot of closed sales and the, uh, or yes, the app, I'm sorry, this is where it gets confusing. It's the average price per square foot of closed sales, but it's what those list prices were before they closed. And then the red line is the actual sales price that they closed at. So uh, you can see that the brown line is lower than the red, meaning that the actual closing price was higher than what that list price was when they went under contract. 
So I hope that makes sense. Um, I don't understand why it's so like hard for me to wrap my brain around <laughs> defining these, but um, it's just looking at different points in time. Uh, and so it gets a little bit confusing. But the point that the Cromford Report is trying to make with this is that the under contract homes is also flattening right now. So the, the average dollar per square foot for anything under contract is not increasing. It doesn't look like it's decreasing, but it's certainly not on an upward trend as it had been before. And then when we have the red and the brown line, um, those will eventually switch, right? So we're eventually going to see that the uh, actual sales price per square foot um, of what it was listed at is uh, going to go down compared to the closed list price. So those those two are going to switch, meaning that homes are going to close at a lower price than what they were actually listed for. And right now we have the opposite, right? They're closing for higher than what they were listed for. So these two coming closer together is certainly showing that um, that gap is shrinking. And once those two lines cross, we will essentially be back in a more normal market environment. So this is gonna be something to watch um, as these trends continue. Now let's talk about the CMI. If you're new here, the Cromford Market Index is an index that the Cromford Report came up with that they've tracked over the last 20 years and it helps us understand supply and demand factors in our market. It uh, allows us to understand where prices are headed as well. So if we have more supply than we have demand, we are in a buyer's market and prices will decrease. And if we have less supply and more demand, then we are in a seller's market and prices will increase. And so as you translate that to these numbers, the market index, anything over 110 is a seller's market, anything under 90 is a buyer's market, and in between that 90 to 110 range is a normal market. So um, we have been in a strong seller's market and here's where we're at as of May 28th. We're at 287.6, so we are under 300. Uh, the first time I was able to say that was earlier this week, and now we're already 10 points below that because in one of my videos earlier this week, was it was 298. So 287, our demand is 96.8, so it's still in that normal range, but it's getting closer to being low demand. Um, so we're, technically, you know, just about 4%, 3.2% 3, 3 below normal for demand. But like I said, anywhere between 90 to 110, they kind of consider normal. Then when we look at supply, this has gone up again, 33.7. So we're about 64% below normal for our supply. And uh, we had been like in the 70s for sure, 70% uh, below normal for quite a while. So we're certainly like into this, into the 30s now. We've been flirting with it, but at 33.7, I mean, we're, we're just continuing to trend upward. So we're still very supply constrained, but with the demand going down in addition to the supply starting to go up, that's what's dropping this index altogether and bringing us closer to a normal market where supply and demand can come together. So that's where we're trending and pretty quickly. Now down here, I have the uh, list of all the major cities and what their respective CMIs are. Um, and there's been a more, uh, uh, the change in all of these cities has been accelerated again this week. So month over month, um, when we look back this week to uh, a month ago, we've seen a decrease by on average 28%. And last week when I reported this, we saw a 24% decrease. So the acceleration in decrease of these CMIs has, uh, has increased, if that makes sense. Um, and you can see the most affected cities here is the ones I have circled. So Avondale, Chandler, Gilbert, Cave Creek, and Queen Creek, all of those cities had the largest change in their CMIs over the last month. The ones that were least effective were Fountain Hills and Paradise Valley, although they still had a change of 21%. So, um, you know, it's it's not 
minimal, but it's much less than um, some of these other cities, uh, these changes at 37% um, and so on. So 40%, that's a pretty big change over the last month. So all of the cities are feeling this. We now um, only have seven cities with a CMI over 300, and we used to have 15 cities with a CMI over 300. Um, and even if you look back before that, still at uh, some point this year, we had all cities over 300. So uh, things are definitely shifting. The acceleration of the CMI going down is certainly telling us that the market's changing. Uh, sellers are losing their advantage. Uh, it's still a seller's market, but you're losing that leverage every single day. And buyers are gaining some advantage because they have less competition right now. With demand going down, buyers don't have to fight against as many offers. Uh, therefore, they're not waiving all the contingencies if they don't have to, and sellers are losing leverage to be able to force buyers to do that. So, uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see where we end up. Things are definitely changing uh, week after week. And I just wanted to read specifically um, what the Cromford Report had said about these changes. Um, the decline in the CMI values is still accelerating with an average monthly change of 28% compared with 24% last week. The pace at which the market is cooling off is both astonishing and widespread. Um, they did also say that least affected are the active adult areas such as Sun City, uh, Sun City West, Sun Lakes, none of which are big enough to appear on this table because uh, they need more data than just those smaller cities. So they use these major cities for that, for the CMI. Um, but it's you know interesting to hear how the Cromford Report is surprised at how quickly things are declining as well. So uh, that's all I got this week. I hope that information is helpful. Again, uh, you know, it's anyone's guess on where we go from here. We could certainly start to coast at more of a normal market, um, or we could shoot back up. One thing I will share from my personal experience is I have been hearing from a lot more buyer and seller clients about making a move, whether it's listing their home or starting to, uh, start the home search again. So in my business, I'm starting to see activity tick up, which, um, you know, if I'm feeling that, I assume other agents are as well, and perhaps we'll start to see that playing out in these market stats, I don't know. Um, so I'm kind of on this ride along with all of you guys. But if you have any questions about your situation, check the description below. I have a link where you can set up a time to chat with me. I also have a free home value uh, estimate that you can click on to get an instant home value. And if you are thinking of selling and just want more information, I can prepare a CMA for you as well. So check out all that info in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for coming to my channel, watching this video and following me every week. And I will be back later this week with some more data for you on Friday. I'm Caitlin McKegg with the Desert Dreamers team at HomeSmart.